Hi, how are you? My name's Beta, and today we'll be going over the most dangerous SCPs according to one TikTok. Wow, we really are scraping the bottom of the barrel. Usually people go over multiple TikToks, not just one. So a couple of nights ago, I saw a TikTok pop up on my feed at like 4 a.m. You know, usual jobless friend behavior. And one of the TikToks that popped up for some reason was a Mr. Incredible meme, but the context was the most dangerous SCPs out there, detailing 10 different SCPs ranging from least dangerous to, I'm assuming world ending, most dangerous to exist. And as you probably know, I know like maybe two, don't even know the numbers for them. One of them being the most furry bait one out there known as Mallow. But when I went over it a little bit ago, I got a couple of questions about like, Beta, do you know about this SCP? Do you think this one one's more of a furry or not. I'm like, you're just listing off numbers to me. I, I know nothing about the SCP universe. I'm a big fan of like horror based universes. I love ARGs. I love analog horror, but the SCP foundation and universe is something I never really got into. As, as weird and fascinating as it is, I just never really put the effort into learning about it. But after seeing this TikTok, it kind of intrigued me. Because yeah, some of the images associated with SCP insert numbers here, they might not really detail what they're about. But regardless, I wanted to go over or at least learn about these SCPs today, and then I'll also be ranking them on a tier list from A to F. And I also want to see if this TikTok does prove true on its opinion about the most dangerous SCPs out there. But, you know, take it with a grain of salt. It's someone's opinion. But either way, let's go over what this TikTok has to offer, and then we'll go over the SCPs featured in the TikTok. All right, that's just a crab to start. Um, shellfish allergies, yeah, can be a little deadly, I guess. Zombies, I think. Wait a minute, is that image AI generated? It looks it. Why do their faces look so distorted? Those don't, I, the bar was not high with this TikTok, but here we are. 096, oh, that's the, the, the image demon one, where if you look at its face, it, it like hunts you down no matter how far away you are. Okay, so I know, I know one of these, at least. Teddy bear with different variations of it. Okay. Okay. SCP-2846, just a giant squid. 2317, don't know what that is. Oh, hey, that's the giant alligator one. The, the giant reptilian monster thing that just can't die. Okay, so I know one or two of these, I think. Oh, good. Thalassophobia. Awesome. Wouldn't survive that. Even more thalassophobia. Okay bigger monster in the ocean. This one looks like an isopod. Wait, I have an isopod. Look at him. Look at how cute he is. His name's Muffin. Is that SCP just Muffin? Who knows? Maybe he's sweet and cute. I, I'd like to think so. Okay, that one's just a biblically accurate angel. Look, if you just added some eyes scattered here and there, it would be the perfect tool album cover. I mean, I guess it is deadly if it, if it looks like it, and it might be. I don't know. Okay, so those are the SCPs, and we're gonna go over each and every one of them featured today. And we'll just determine whether or not they're actually uh, deadly or dangerous, or if the reactions associated with them are accurate. So let's start with SCP-098, which is the spider crab looking thing. I don't know what it is, but let's see. SCP-098, also known as the surgeon crab. I can already tell this one thing might belong in Australia. If this thing is real, which it isn't, but if it was real, I could definitely see it being in Australia. SCP-098 is a species of previously unknown crustacean. The front limbs terminate in knife-like structures that incorporate silica to form an extremely sharp edge. Specimens reach larger size than normal for land-dwelling arthropods at 40 centimeters tall and as large as 60 centimeters across. Okay, so giant crabs with knife hands. I mean, this is already seeming rather deadly, at least from how I look at it. They demonstrate pack hunting behavior when attacking prey. <laughs> when specimens detect a prey animal, they will attempt to surround it. When ready, one specimen will approach the prey animal. When its attention is fixed on the first specimen, others will move behind the prey and attempt to cut the tendons of the legs or other limbs. They will continue to mimic the sounds the prey animal makes to disorient it. After making a cut, the specimen of SCP-098 will spit a viscous mucus over the wound. This substance hardens rapidly, preventing blood loss or infection. At this point, specimens will begin to feed on the prey animal by cutting off small pieces of flesh. Feeding can last several hours or several days depending on the size of the prey animal and the number of specimens present. 
Okay, so SCP-098 is a giant crab with knife hands that will hunt in packs, will attack animals by cutting its tendons and muscles so it can immobilize it, and will spit on those wounds to immobilize it further, and then will eat it until it stops breathing. Bruh. And this is first on the list. They're like half a meter long and tall, which is a lot bigger than people give it credit for. So they're probably easier to spot. So like run away from them if you can. I actually wonder how they taste. Now that you think about it, you know, they're giant crabs, so there's probably a lot of crab meat in there. You know, just ignore the giant knife-like hands and you got a probably a really big and delicious crab cake if you think about it. Oh, it even says here, they normally pose little threat to adult humans, preferring smaller prey such as dogs, cats, and small pigs. Oh, okay, you know, like... Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, I feel like the easy solution to this is just <laughs> don't go to Australia. <laughs> that's, that's all I can imagine, you know? So SCP-098, I'm gonna put it in E tier for now. I don't think it's F tier as in it's completely non-dangerous. Like if you just exist around it, it poses no threat. It's got a level of dangerousness if you're not aware of it and you kind of just approach it normally. But for the most part, it's not really that dangerous. All right, the next one on the list is SCP-008, which had the, I believe they were zombies. SCP-008 is a complex prion, samples of which are stored in each of the known G2 sites. Research into SCP-008 is highly classified and primarily aimed at preventing research, which may lead to the synthesis of SCP-008 in the distant future. Traits of the SCP-008 prion include 100% infectiousness, 100% lethality, transmission through exposed mucous membranes in all bodily fluids, not airborne or water. Born. Symptoms of infection manifest no more than three hours after exposure and include flu-like symptoms with high fever plus severe dementia in later stages, coma onset approximately 20 hours after first symptoms appear and 12 hours after noticeable dementia. Subject can adapt to its damaged nervous systems but is limited to basic physical activities, including standing up, balancing on two legs, walking, biting, grabbing, and crawling. The subject will energetically move towards sights, sounds, and smells it associates with living humans. Subject will attempt to ingest living humans if physical contact is made. The SCP P008 itself is a zombie virus, which if anything, it takes a lot less time to turn people into zombies. Like it takes about like 12 to 20 hours from what it says here. It could have its effects. We've seen many different scenarios of like, what would happen if zombies actually existed? It's more of a question of if zombies existed today and there was like a patient zero, what would happen? How deadly would this be? And in all honesty, I don't really know. There are many different scenarios that we can predict would happen. But in terms of deadliness or dangerousness, it's kind of like, eh. If someone goes to bite you, then you don't know them. You usually don't let them bite you. Not really that dangerous, but it has the potential to be. We've already dealt with our own plague in the past three, four years or so now. I'm gonna put this in D tier. So the next one on our list is SCP-096, which I believe is the photo abomination one. And no matter where you are, if you see its face in a video or photo, it will hunt you down and kill you. If you don't look at it, if no one sees a picture of its face or looks at its face, it's fine. I know some of you guys might want me to go over all of these or at least read all the entries on them, but at least with this one, I know about it. Like I've seen a short film on it that my friend showed me. But in terms of this SCP, it has the potential to be dangerous, but it also has the easiest potential to be contained. Throw this thing in a box with no cameras and no lights, never open it, and then you're set. That's all you have to do. But also this thing has insane potential to be dangerous. Like for example, if someone just decided to, oh, I don't know, send every phone out there a picture of this thing's face and everyone looked at it, well, it's got one mission hunt down and kill anyone that looks at a picture of it. So I'm gonna probably put it in C tier. It has immense potential to be dangerous, but it can also be as minimized as simply putting it in a box and leaving it there. So the next one on our list, we have SCP-1048, which are the teddy bear looking things. Don't know what this is, but if they're getting progressively worse and how dangerous they are, and so far we've been over surgeon crab, zombie infections, and something that doesn't want to see its face, otherwise it kills you if you see it. I'm scared for what this teddy bear will do. The second image search result is a DeviantArt image. I love how it starts with SCP-1048 is currently free to roam Site-24 as it poses no threat, has been observed to greatly improve the morale and personnel that interact with it. That whole bit is crossed out. What happened? SCP-1048 is a small teddy bear, approximately 33 centimeters in height. Subject is capable of moving of its own accord and can communicate through a small range of gestures. The subject regularly shows affection to individuals in ways found endearing by most people. So this thing is like a cute little teddy bear, an affectionate little teddy bear. I wonder what it could possibly do that makes it this deadly. 
The more anomalous behavior of SCP-1048 was not observed until approximately seven months after it was originally secured. It is hypothesized that the subject is able to construct crude replicas of itself by using various materials, by a process that is yet to be observed directly by Foundation staff. Currently, there are three known creations of SCP-1048, designated A, B, and C. The nature of these creations has been in stark contrast to SCP-1048's general behavior, as all have exhibited extreme violence towards humans. Okay, so this SCP is a living teddy bear, as endearing and lovable and affectionate as it is. It creates replicas of itself out of different materials, and those replicas are not kind. What have they done? There's entries for each and every one of these so far. Subject resembles a teddy bear similar in size and shape to SCP-1048, but it is made entirely out of human ears. Yeah, I think, I, I think I'm good. I think, I, I think I'm good. We need no more. A teddy bear made out of human ears. I'm good. I don't need to know what it does. But you know what? There's, there's got to be some reason why this is deadly. Let's keep reading. Dr. Carver was called to the scene along with the security team. The security team arrived first and attempted to contain SCP-1048-A. The subject emitted a high-pitched shriek that inflicted intense pain in the eyes and ears of everyone in a 10-meter radius. Ear-like growths immediately began growing on those within 5 meters of the subject, covering their bodies in less than 20 seconds. Every person afflicted with this symptom died in three minutes. Autopsies revealed the cause of death to be asphyxiation caused by an abundance of the ear-like growths manifesting in the mouths and trachea of all victims. I mean, I feel like it's just dangerous as is. All it has to do is scream, and you're filled with ears. You're covered in head to toe with ear growths. I'm good. Yeah, th this thing would probably go in like B tier on its own. It uses the power of imagination and affection and whimsicalness to make copies of itself that do not like people. So SCP-1048-B. Subject's appearance was nearly identical to SCP-1048, but it moved in an irregular jerky manner. Witnesses reported that it appeared as if something was moving inside of SCP-1048-B. Subject made no attempt to interact initially until a burst in its seams revealed what appeared to be the hand and arm of a human in infant poking out and grasping at the air. At the sight of this, a female researcher screamed, and SCP-1048-B reacted by emitting a high-pitched cry similar to that of a human infant. The subject then attempted to blank the screaming researcher, causing massive internal damage. Okay, so again, it screams and attacks people in a way that is not great and is made up of what I'm assuming is a human fetus. Yeah, so far these two have been rather deadly. What about SCP-1048-C? Subject resembles a teddy bear similar to SCP-1048, but composed entirely of rusted metal scraps. In the attempted pursuit of SCP-1048-C, Dr. Carver witnessed the death and maiming of however many Foundation personnel as the subject exhibited extreme violence during its escape. Okay, so SCP-1048, from what I read, is a loving, affectionate teddy bear until it started taking things and making replicas of itself. So similarly with other SCPs, the actual SCP in question is not really deadly, it's just the byproducts that are. I'm putting this thing in B tier strictly because of the ear part. The fact that this thing or one of these things can scream <laughs> and kill someone in three minutes. Um, yeah, I don't... Yeah, I'm putting it in B tier. I think I might need a moment from that. That was, that was a lot. All right, the next SCP is 2846, Giant Octopus. Awesome, I forgot about this one. So my thalassophobia might be kicking in here. SCP-2846 collectively refers to a set of phenomena occurring within the Gulf Atlantic region of the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, so there's A and B here, with A being a massive aquatic octopoid entity, currently estimated to be at least 955 to 990 meters in length. This entity is known to appear from deep water during storms within the Gulf Atlantic region and attack civilian vessels, specifically cruise liners or merchant ships. The attacks are sporadic and often occur quickly and without Without prior warning. And then SCP-2846-B is a large seafaring vessel that appears during A's appearance events. This vessel, which appears to be a Pennsylvania-class super dreadnought battleship, also appears from deep water before surfacing at the location. This vessel is always seen engaging with SCP-2846-A, which will then turn to retaliate, and neither entity will disappear until A is sufficiently crippled or otherwise incapacitated, after which both will submerge again until the next appearance event. So it's pretty much just kind of like a ghost event, but it actually happens in which the event itself is a giant fucking octopus and then a battleship to attack it so 
I guess that's deadly. I mean, just stay out of water too. I feel like a lot of these, when it comes to the giant water-based beasts here, you kind of just like don't engage with it. You just go away elsewhere. Like with the knife hand crab one, you, you just kind of stay away from the location where it could be. It's easy to spot. Same thing with the giant octopus here. You just don't go into the Gulf Atlantic region. That's it. But also it is a giant octopus, so yeah, survival rate for that isn't really that high. Like if it's actively violent towards any other ship, then yeah, but once it's being attacked by SCP-2846-B, then it's fine. Actually, you know, I'm gonna put it in C tier. In terms of dangerousness towards people, just like kind of stay out of that region. But otherwise, you know, it's only dangerous if you like interact with it sort of thing. The TikTok that we're going over might not gauge how dangerous or more dangerous ones might be more than the other. You kind of just have to think about it a little bit and then apply your own reasoning on whether or not it's dangerous. So with that, we are halfway through the SCPs from this TikTok. And according to it, it's only just going to get worse from here. All right, so after the giant octopus, the next SCP on our list is 2317. Don't know what this one is about, but it looked like some sort of godlike entity in the picture that was featured in the TikTok, so this can only mean great things. SCP-2317 is a wooden door and frame originally constructed as a basement door for a 19th century Massachusetts brownstone. Oh, oh, I think I know this one. I've, I've seen like one or two videos about this specific SCP. Don't people say it's like the Scarlet King, but it isn't the Scarlet King? I know about the Scarlet King because some people won't shut up about it and that's okay. But like, it, it's the one where you have like the seven pillars in the alternate reality that have chains underneath them. And then underneath that is the SCP creature. What is that thing? I think that's more of the, the dangerous part of it. Entity appears to be an obese, human-like creature of immense proportions. Estimated height, if fully erect, is over 200 kilometers. Horns resembling tree branches sprout from its head, which lacks a lower jaw. Entire body is covered in millions of overlapping plate-like scales. Seven heavy hooks are embedded in the entity's back, each one attached to a heavy steel chain connected to the lower end of one of the seven pillars embedded in the ceiling of the chamber. At the time of the writing of this document, six of the pillars or chains have been broken or damaged, and only one chain remains intact. Okay, so this is the one where, you know, you have the seven chains attached to the pillars that keep this thing asleep, this giant creature, which its full height is estimated to be 200 kilometers tall. For reference, the atmosphere on Earth is, I think, at most 200 kilometers tall. 200 kilometers. And so what I'm assuming is this is one of those, like, creatures or monsters or, or gods that if the last chain is broken, it awakens, and then it goes into the different plane of existence, aka our plane of existence, and wrecks havoc. Ooh, there's a little bit of an addendum here. When initially discovered, four of the seven chains were broken and three were intact. The breaking of the fifth chain in blank corresponded directly to a blank event in our world. The sixth chain, which broke in blank, was also coincident with a much more severe event, eventually resulting in the deaths of two million people. SCP-2317 is a primeval entity known as the Devourer of Worlds. The Irakesh Codex indicates that it was captured and imprisoned by Irakeshian mystics circa 1894 BCE. So this thing is known as the Devourer of Worlds, and it is imprisoned by one chain, by a bunch of pillars that hold chains underneath that keep it contained. The breaking of the final chain would result in an XK class end of the world scenario. So we're finally getting to the point where the SCPs on this list or the potential creatures associated with them are end of the world scenarios if awakened, if activated, if left to their own devices. So yeah, this thing is pretty dangerous. I would definitely put this in A tier because it has a potentiality to be an end of the world scenario. It is neat though. I do like the idea of like godlike extra dimensional entities existing that are kept asleep or kept from rampaging from some small thing. That's why I'm a fan of like the uh, the mystery flesh pit whole ARG because it's just like this massive creature, this massive beast that has the potential to wreak havoc but is left asleep. And that's kind of neat to me. I, I like that whole concept. This is probably like my favorite SCP that we've read about so far. So after the wonderful experience that was SCP-2317, we have SCP-682, aka Indestructible Gator. So let's read its article. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-682 must be destroyed as soon as possible. Well, that's quite telling. 
At this time, no means available to SCP teams are capable of destroying SCP-6A2, only able to cause massive physical damage. It should be contained within a 5 by 5 by 5 meter chamber with 25 centimeter reinforced acid-resistant steel plate lining all inside surfaces. The containment chamber should be filled with hydrochloric acid until SCP-6A2 is submerged and incapacitated. I feel like hydrochloric acid, as strong as that is, you could probably use a little bit stronger than that, can't you? So it needs to bathe in acid on a 24-7 basis in order to be contained. Or at least semi-contained. Great. Regardless, what's the description of this? SCP-6A2 is a large, vaguely reptile-like creature of unknown origin. It appears to have a hatred of all life, which has been expressed in several interviews during containment. I would say welcome to the club, but I don't think I hate life as much as SCP-6A2 does. I mean, if I was supposed to be contained in a giant vat of acid in order to suppress me, then yeah, I'd, I'd probably be a little bit upset. SCP-6A2 has always been observed to have extremely high strength, speed, and reflexes. SCP-6A2's regenerative capabilities and resilience are staggering, and it has been seen moving and speaking with its body 87% destroyed or rotted. Yeah, that's pretty dangerous. But like with SCP-6A2, it is a reptilian looking thing I like to call it a gator because I just like I just like gators in general it is indestructible completely auto regenerative can't be killed which is all three things in one and it hates everything and wants to kill everything in life the fact that they need to contain it in hydrochloric acid in a metal box is kind of metal as fuck like yeah with the last one keep it restrained with like some chains on pillars and a salt realm you might not know if it even passes over into the real world so maybe there's a potentiality of it not being a threat but with SCP-6A2 it is a clear danger if you encounter it and it is provoked it will destroy it's an unstoppable force i'll put it in b tier how about that it's something that actually poses a real threat and has been determined to be threatening rather than something that might allude to being threatening but either way hopefully the next three are more deadly than the last few i mean the last one literally looks like a biblically accurate angel so i'm expecting this to quite literally destroy like the universe either way we go from there to scp 3000 which according to the tiktok is is more dangerous than the last two. It's a massive aquatic serpentine entity, strongly resembling a giant moray eel. Oh, just what I wanted. The full length of SCP-3000 is impossible to determine, but it is hypothesized to be between 600 and 900 kilometers. Okay. So like about a hundred gargantuan leviathans in length? probably longer. The head of SCP-3000 measures roughly 2.5 meters in diameter, and sections of the body proper are as large as 10 meters in diameter. Okay, so it's not super big, like godlike big, more just like giant sea creature big. I, I was expecting it to be like a lot bigger with the length of it. SCP-3000 is typically a sedentary creature, only moving its head in response to certain stimuli or during feeding. SCP-3000 is carnivorous, and despite its sedentary nature, it's capable of moving quickly to dispatch prey. Okay, so it's just a giant eel that exists in a 300 or so kilometer diameter in some part of the ocean. I'm gonna be honest, this is like not really that dangerous if you just ignore it. This is, if anything, it's less dangerous than the octopus SCP that we went over like a few entries ago. This is like D tier. I'm, I'm sorry, it's, it, yeah, it's dangerous. You know, if you encounter it, God forbid you're diving in the middle of the ocean, which is already quarantined off. Yeah, it attacks people that go near it based on movement, but like, just don't go near it. It's kind of like, you know, saying, oh, a bear is deadly and dangerous. Well, yeah, it is naturally dangerous, but that's if you are actively going out <laughs> in bear territory, you know? So SCP-3000, as terrifying as it is from the thalassophobic standpoint, if you are afraid of deep sea creatures like I am, then it's not really anything. You, you just kind of, like, it doesn't... I'm trying to understand how this is necessarily more dangerous than an unstoppable force that wants to kill everything that is alive and a destroyer of worlds. But the next one we go on to is SCP-169. From what I remember, it was another giant aquatic creature. What looked like uh, an isopod, kind of like my, my lovely stuffed animal muffin in the back. You know, what? We'll, we'll, we'll have him here with us. How about this? We'll have our nice isopod muffin with us for this journey. I don't know if the creature in question is an isopod, but he's nice and cuddly and sweet, and he makes me happy. 
All right, SCP-169. Because of its size, SCP-169 cannot and almost certainly will never be contained. No structure on Earth is large enough or strong enough to contain SCP-169. And the Earth's orbit suggests SCP-169 is located in the southern Atlantic Ocean, possibly stretching around the tip of South America. What's with the Atlantic Ocean having all these just kind of obnoxious SCPs? I don't think SCP-3000 is near that area, but you had the one with the octopus and the battleship, and now you have a giant, like, whatever this thing is. The Atlantic Ocean does not sound fun. <laughs> It doesn't sound fun to be around. Any satellite footage of a shift in the land masses produced by SCP-169 is to be excised and destroyed by embedded agents. Two doctors estimate SCP-169's body length to be between 2,000 and 8,000 kilometers. 2,000 kilometers at a bare minimum. That is 10 devourer of worlds any change of depth by scp-169 could result in the disappearance of the entire archipelago it is that big that if it goes deeper into the ocean an entire island is just gone that's how massive this thing is but what is it what does it do is it does it just exist like what, what more is here scp-169 moves slowly less than one kilometer per week but seems only to be adrift regular seismic tremors seem to indicate breathing about every three months causing minor shifts in the island's terrain suggesting that the creature is probably dormant i like this though this is what i said before i love creatures or humongous monsters that are just like asleep and if they awaken it's like it, it's kind of over it's it's over it breathes once every three months and causes seismic tremors i'd say it is a danger like a potential danger but is it more dangerous than devourer of worlds or even like scp-682 yeah i don't know about this tech talk now that i'm thinking about it i was excited knowing the first three like oh a teddy bear that creates other teddy bears that are extremely violent that really threw me off so it made me wonder okay what's what's gonna happen with this these next few i'll put it in c tier it's like the middle ground like if it moves even like a little bit then yeah entire sea levels would shift immensely but so far nothing's like kind of happened you know it's just kind of always existed as an island he's just chilling scp-169 is just chilling but that leads us to our final scp on this tiktok scp-2470 arguably the most dangerous scp according to this tiktok i'm more so curious about this because of the whole biblically accurate angel looking thing because that does intrigue me you know the, the religious extraterrestrial aspects of it so let, let's see what this has to offer special containment procedures to facilitate containment, Area 141 has been established at the site of discovery. On-site personnel are responsible for both containing the object and protecting Area 141 from any and all outside threats. SCP-2470 is a specific existential entity, or a perceptive element, which is objectively an initial manifestation of a ZK-class scenario. Due to insuperable obstacles related to its perception, the object's appearance, if it has any, remains unknown. Its current locus is determined indirectly based on the area of effect it produces. So this thing, they're not sure what it is, what it's supposed to look like, but is the manifestation of an end-of-the-world scenario. So yeah, I think this might be safe to say this is probably the most dangerous one here, and we haven't even gotten into the meat and bones of all of it. Said effect is manifested through the instantaneous disappearance of any object or event perceived by SCP-2470 from objective reality. First and foremost, this applies to the most proximate aspects, which are directly accessible to the object's senses. Disappearance of soil caused a crater up to 200 meters deep to manifest at the location of the object's discovery. Apparently, the object was somehow confused that every demanifested volume of soil brought more into view, and that slowed the process down. It did not manage to realize the Earth as a limited and finite entity. This SCP is all about perceiving objects. Regardless, it wipes things out of reality like just plain and simple it just does it see i think it's safe to say that this is a end of the world scenario for something like this i, I, I was honestly expecting some sort of scp that if it willed it it split every atom in existence you know not something that can't really be perceived oh there's an addendum here yes this object is exactly as dangerous as you were told or probably even more the embryonic state of its mind cannot comprehend many of the things we consider obvious that air is not nothingness and exists not just when it feels a breeze yes it is a essentially keep the object in complete isolation and to avert any transmission of the most insignificant information at any cost. It learns very fast and we can never be sure which grain of knowledge it lacks to be given a nudge to the ideas of space, time, infinity, and universe. Oh! 
The more it learns and perceives and understands of reality that exists, it wipes that out. And I'm assuming it has a range to it from how it was described that there was a 200 meter crater underneath it. That That's not even like a, a monster or a, a creature. That is an entity that just is outside of the bounds of any sort of understanding. And I'm gonna be honest, the fact that I don't understand it even from reading it is scary enough as is. For the sake of not knowing fully what it is that it does or how it does these things, I'm putting it in A tier. It definitely trumps anything else. It just kind of annihilates any other SCP in terms of dangerousness on this list. Like, like even Vower of Worlds, if it perceives that, it, it could just wipe it out. So that's why I'm putting it at like the top of A tier. And those are pretty much the SCPs here. I'm kind of confused by this list. I was kind of expecting like something a bit more, I guess, tangible for some of these, especially the latter half as they got progressively or supposedly got progressively more and more dangerous based on, you know, Mr. Incredible's reaction. But in terms of dangerousness, like some of them are like, dude, just put it in a box with acid or something. Like you can, you really can do, do such wonders with, with a box and acid, really. But still, it was nice to do a little bit of a deep dive into the SCP universe, and you know what, I might be a little bit hooked on the whole SCP thing, so we might go over more of these in the future, or at least just discover what some of them are. So if you want to see me go over more of these SCPs, or what you think is the most horrifying, terrifying, dangerous SCP out there, do let me know in the comments, I would greatly appreciate it, because, you know, these here, I, d I don't know if they're the most dangerous SCPs. But in terms of our tier list, so far, it's SCP-2317 and 2470, and a tier as being the most dangerous ones on this list. You know, I might need to move this around a little bit. Hold on. I'm going to put SCP-3000 in E tier. It's dangerous if you interact with it and you go looking for it. And then SCP-2846 is about the same thing, but just it's its own happening and a little bit more lethal than SCP-3000. So I'll put it in D tier. Doesn't really correlate to the list they had on this TikTok, but hey, you know, at the end of the day, it's a short one minute video. And I took well over three hours hours to explain just that. That's Beta Aided Delota for you. If you enjoyed this, be sure to let me know in the comments below. I would greatly appreciate the feedback and support, especially since I'm trying something so far different from what I'm used to doing on here, which, you know, is furry stuff. Yeah, but I have a separate channel for that, so if you like my furry stuff and, and you want to watch more of the furry drama nonsense videos that I do, check out the channel known as Boodles. Link will be in the description below, but you probably already know about that channel by now. But on that note, though, I'm going to get going. Hope you all have a wonderful night. Take care. Life stay, Jack, and I'll see you all in the next one.